Hey everybody, White Bear Nan here. Today, I'm gonna to give you my top five things that I think administrators should be looking for when they come to an observation or a walkthrough. As teachers, we all know that this is one of the things that improves our practice the most, constant observations and, and feedback from our administrators to kind of let us know what we're doing well and what we can improve upon. Some of the most successful schools in the world are based on this practice of observations and feedback. And if you look around at schools that have really, really master teachers, those are the ones that are typically being observed. Those are the ones the administrators want you to go see. So I'm gonna tell you why an administrator would wanna go see some of these things, because there's some specific things that we're gonna be looking for when you come to come walk into class. During the observations I've done, I've observed classes from 40 kids to one kid, and all the things that you kind of look for are all typically the same. Um, let's go over them. So, without further ado, here are my top five things that I think administrators should be looking for when they come to a classroom. All right, tip number one, classroom management. This is something that the first thing we want to do is when we walk into a room, we want to make sure that there is some idea that it's managed. Now, what does that mean? routines, organization, procedures. These are the things that we want to see that you've instilled in the students somewhat. From the day one, I mean, if it's early in the school year, September, first couple of weeks of school, you are setting up those routines for your students. Do you have a certain routine with your classroom as far as the lesson plan goes? Do you have a do now? Do you have exit tickets? If you're working on a group project and they're at a table and you say, hey, Johnny, I need you to get glue. Does Johnny know where that glue is? Can he go get it really quick? Come right back to the group. So those are some of the things that you, as a teacher, you know, <clears throat> you one of the, the things that I love the most is those elementary school teachers. You guys get this down. Everything is labeled. Everything has a place. And that's why, because you're building up those executive functions in the skills and skills in the students where you want them to be able to understand how having things organized, having things labeled, having things having its own place really streamlines their efficiency to learn. Because ultimately, if they don't know where anything is, their homework, their books, um, their pen, their pencil, these things will impact how much instruction you can get in. So the more you can set those routines, the easier the students can ease into the learning process. As an administrator, when I see those kind of things instilled, I know that this, the teacher is set up for success. So classroom management, as far as that goes, that's the organization part. The other piece is the students. Obviously, if I'm an administrator, I don't want to see students running amok through the classroom. Um, obviously, sometimes if you're a science teacher, I like to, as me, you know, that was what I would call organized chaos. Um, you're doing a lab, there's a lot of stuff going on. But does it seem managed? Or is there kids, you know, do, doing stuff that they shouldn't be in the corner? Um, these are the things that we want to see that you're, be, you're able to manage. I will tell you, and you could probably do videos upon videos upon it, um, but classroom management is probably the hardest thing for new teachers to get a grasp on. Um, and, so, and unfortunately, because so much time is spent on classroom management, then it's very hard to hone these other skills. So one, first thing is classroom management. If, you are, if you're a struggling teacher or a new teacher that have, have difficulties with classroom management, there are plenty of teachers out there that kind of show you some of those routines. A lot of classroom management can be handled through the routines you instill in the students. So that's a big one. First one, classroom management. Okay, my second tip is student engagement. Kind of goes to classroom management, but student engagement, huge. Um, when I come to observe a class, one of the first things I want to see are what's happening with the kids. Most of the time when I actually do an observation, I'm not really looking at the teacher as much as I'm looking at the students. I want to see are they engaged? Are they asking questions? Can they work independently? Can they work in a group? Are they able to understand the material in a way that you're presenting it? This is kind of one of those things that um, as an administrator, we really, really like live for. We want to see those aha moments. We want to see the students learning. We want to see the expressions on their face, opening up their eyes, like looking at what they're looking, you know, um, identifying with the character in a book or somehow connecting something that happened on the news to what's happening in their science class. So some of those things that we really look for as an administrator when any observation is student engagement. A big key piece is that um, when you're engaging in a student, especially if it's questioning, 
Um, wait time is a big one. Are you allowing the students to process that information? Sometimes a teacher will ask a question and rush to kind of save the kids so that there's that no dead space. Allow that space. One of the two things that I teach a lot of my newer teachers is allow the student to process the information. Just because you know the answer, they might recall it. it might just take them a little bit longer to get recall it from where they're, you know, they're storing it in their long-term memory. However, student engagement, big piece. Um, we're always kind of looking for it. Okay, my third thing that I think administrators are going to be looking for when they come to your classroom is evidence that this lesson was planned and that you had some sort of design in mind when you started the day out. Most of the times if it's an observation, like a formal observation, you have gone through a pre-op with your administrator and so they kind of have an idea of what you're doing. But even if it's just a walkthrough, if I'm an administrator, I want to walk through a lesson that I know that you were thinking about, that you kind of had an essential question for, that it had a beginning, a middle, some sort of an end. Um, you know, lesson plans are some of those things. Different administrators require different things. Um, I'm one of those administrators that I'd love to see at least the beginning to the, the lesson. I'm a big fan of the do now. It's getting the students engaged, trying to recall some of that prior knowledge from the day before or the week before. Um, you know, especially if it's like a Monday, you know, you, you know, the students are groggy, you're getting them started for the week. So lesson planning is huge. Um, the, the, typically for me, what I like to see is the, the older the student, there's usually less of the, those agendas, whereas those younger students where you're elementary, middle school, um, agendas are important, how quickly you're pacing the lessons. The students need to kind of know why, what we're doing here. Um, I'm always a big proponent of letting the students know why we're doing something and what we're planning to get done in this class. Um, and that's what we want to see when, you, when we walk into a classroom is, is there evidence that you just took the time out to plan the lesson? Does it fit overall to your overarching question for your unit? Um, especially if you're being observed by your department head because your department head is going to be you know, very in tune to those sort of things like is this person on pace with the curriculum? Do they understand the curriculum? Do they understand what the requirements of any sort of like state exams that are part of their curriculum? So are they differentiating all those things? So those are some of the things that um, are really key. It's, it's not something that's obvious as far as like um, like I won't know what you wrote on a piece of paper. However, I can definitely tell if this lesson was planned. And some administrators will ask for that at the end of the lesson or prior to the lesson, what was the plan? So be really, really cognizant of that. Understand your standards. Um, so these are really big pieces and, and things that are really help you as a teacher because the, the more you do it, and here's the other thing I tell my, especially I tell all my new teachers, you're writing your book, you're writing your lesson plan book. If you write this lesson, you really only need to write it once. And then afterwards, you're just kind of tweaking it, making better, finding out what worked, what didn't work, add to it. So, but the scaffolding of your lesson always exists because one next year you're going to teach this content again um, and then years go on so that's why teachers typically become master teachers out of after four or five years because they've taught the lesson enough where they know the lesson plan they know how it works what doesn't work what what works well with their teaching style so those are all things that you got to consider that the administrator is going to look for when they come to look at your lesson and your lesson plan the fourth thing that I think administrators are looking for when they come and do an observation, and I know it for me, is is the content appropriate? Is it rigorous? Um, if I go into a U.S. history class or a chemistry class or an English honors class, is that content appropriate for that class? Is it rigorous enough? Are there any extension activities that are built into that class? Um, those are some of the things that I really want to make sure they touch base. You know, they're kind of one of the things I touch base on the other tips. But it is, should be one of those things that you as a science teacher or a history teacher or an English teacher, you are the gatekeeper of your content. Um, as an administrator, I'm going to say, say to you at the end of the course, like, hey, did this student complete all the work that's required for this student to pass the course? Um, and you're going to tell me yes or no. So that means that you assess the student properly, that you, that you work with the student, you know, even individually, we're able to kind of get an idea of whether the student grasped the material and that it was appropriate and rigorous enough, especially did it prepare them for any state exams that they need to take. Um, so those are the things that, yeah, it exists inside the, the, you know, the other stuff, but um, it's kind of, I treat it, one of those things is that I want to make sure that when I walk into a teacher's classroom that they're the expert in their content area.
My fifth tip and most important tip is I think the one that I think all the men should embrace when they do a walkthrough or an observation. And that is, what is the teacher's professional goals? When I work with my teachers, one of the things I want to find out about them is what is their vision for teaching? And when I go to their classroom and visit their classroom, I want to look through the lens of what they need help with. So prior to a meeting with any, doing any walkthrough, I meet with my teachers or I'll email them or kind of get a feedback from them. But what I really, really want to know is what are some of the things that you as a teacher are looking for to improve your practice? And ultimately, when I walk into a classroom, those are some of the things that I'm gonna look for because that way we're kind of on the same team. We're on the same page where I'm walking in and I'm here to help you, I'm here to coach you because ultimately I think that's where administrators should be. There should be a coaching relationship when you're working with, the, with your teachers that when um, you want the best for your teachers, you want the best teachers, you want the best for your students. And one of the things that is really going to drive that, that bus home is finding out what it is they need to work on, finding this thing that they're finding that they struggle with. If I know a teacher saying, hey, listen, I'm having a real big issue with classroom management, or I'm having an issue with like how I engage with my students, then I know that, hey, these are some of the things that I can look for. So now my radar is up. The other thing is, is I might know somebody who, another teacher is doing it really, really well. I might connect those two teachers. So having to know some of this information prior and observation is huge. I think that um, not enough attention is paid to this. Um, I think all teachers should have professional vision for their teaching, definitely have certain goals. Each year you should up those goals, maybe even each semester. And obviously all goals, they should be measurable. They should definitely be something that you can obtain at the end of the year and say, hey, look, did I achieve it? What, what were the pitfalls? What were my successes? So this is kind of a really important piece that I think is, is not giving enough um, credit towards in when you're working with teachers is how much their idea of what they want to do with their teaching is important. If they don't understand where they're going with their teaching or what they want to do with their teachings, it's very hard to help them. So even if the, the conversation with an administrator and teacher is, what is a vision? How do you set up a vision for teaching? Um, those are very valid conversations to have. I think Obviously, all these things are really important as far as when you're walk, having a walkthrough or an observation. We have one of the only professions where your boss literally comes and sits and watches you for an hour and then gives you feedback on it. Um, most people in the outside world don't understand that concept, but uh, teachers, it's our reality. So use that. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for somebody to come in with fresh eyes, look at what you're doing, give you some really good feedback on it, some actionable feedback on it, and it improves your practice because ultimately we're here to become better teachers so that we can have better students. And that's really what it's all about. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button. Feel free to comment below. I'd like to hear some of the feedback. Let me know some of the things that help you as an administrator or a teacher. What are some of the things you want your administrators looking for when they come into the classroom? Um, thanks again. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Take care. Peace out.